Whenever I'm sitting down to study, I ask myself, what am I going to study precisely? How and when? Planning this out beforehand and knowing what works best in terms of study methods and accountability for me personally is the key component in being able to focus and study efficiently for hours. Because, as always, we need to work smart, not hard. Have an overview of every important topic that will be covered in your exam or is relevant to you. You can map it out, create a list, a spreadsheet. It's important to see your progress at a glance and identify what's next. A very helpful thing to keep in mind is the 80-20 rule. 20% of the effort already covers 80% of the material or the grade. For example, I looked over past exam protocols and determined what questions and areas are most likely to be tested. These were what I focused on first. It's not only the most efficient way of studying, but it also helps you stay motivated as you cover a lot with comparably low effort. Next, you need to figure out what study method works for you. If you're using the wrong one, no amount of motivation and no amount of caffeine will make you concentrated and focused enough. Our brains are built differently, but we can use it to our advantage. Studies have also shown that if you switch up the material you learn or switch up different study methods, your brain is more likely to remember and engage with the material. Sometimes I get so sick of staring at my textbook that I switch to a more picture and diagram based approach or flashcards. Having several different resources at my disposal guarantees that I can stimulate my mind when it drifts off and trick it into focusing again even when it's exactly the same topic as before. Any active study method will help you regain and maintain focus. When you're just passively screaming through text or highlighting it, chances are a lot higher that eventually you'll want to check your phone again or procrastinate in some way or another. But when you're using space repetition or active learning through questions, the likelihood of this decreases a lot. But sometimes, no matter how great our study plan is or how amazing the resources, we need some extra external accountability. One of my favorite ways of getting there is through scheduling a study date with my friends. Studying at the same time is both a great tool for motivation, but also keeps you from getting distracted and slacking off, especially when you have your video on and everyone can see each other. In a way, you're basically simulating the classic library environment and getting the most out of your study time. The most straightforward way of avoiding distraction with your phone or tablet is, of course, flight mode, or just putting your devices as far away as possible. There are also some apps and other alternatives that help you block certain activities and manage your time. Interestingly, when I don't have my phone to tap on, I find myself looking for any hands-on distraction I can find. And the only thing that's left on my table is my water bottle. So, whenever I would normally lock my phone, open Instagram, scroll through it, I grab my bottle of water and take a sip. This keeps me both focused and very hydrated. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, time and how we plan it have a huge effect on our concentration. Making sure you get enough sleep, scheduling study breaks, and being careful not to overwork yourself are all crucial. After all, it's a marathon and not a race. There are certain spans of time no person can stay concentrated and focused for, and that's totally normal and should be accounted for. You should never feel guilty just because you can't study 18 hours a day like you think some other people can. Nobody can realistically do that. A tool that can, however, help with study breaks is the Pomodoro method of having 25 minutes of study time followed by a 5 minute break and a longer break of 15 minutes after some consecutive sessions. This is especially helpful if you find yourself in the zone and lose track of time or have a tendency to have one hour study sessions followed by a three hour study break. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of rewards. Knowing you have something great planned for the evening or the weekend or whenever finals are over, such as movie night, 
or time with friends can do wonders for your drive during your studies. Changing locations or even just a quick walk outside can also help you clear your mind and regenerate some much needed energy. So basically, to sum it up, you need to plan out as much as possible and remember to switch out study methods, study partners and do whatever you can to still maintain some stimulation for your already perhaps very tired and bored mind. I wish you lots of luck and hope this helped you a bit. See you in the next video.